Good day guys and welcome to the channel. My name is James and today I'm going to be walking you through my painting and weathering of the Samoa S35 in one seventy second scale. I'm going to be painting it in the scheme from the 12th Regiment de Chassia, a free French force fighting in Tunisia in 1943. Um, these tanks are fairly interesting, mainly for they have a very unique look to them in general and also their construction being made mostly of cast material. As you can see in these reference photos, the scheme is also quite interesting. They had a large French flag on each side of the tank and a large white star on the top of the commander's collar to avoid being bombed from the air by Allied air support. As you can see from this photo, the tank wasn't particularly large even compared to its users. And there one other one in the desert with a French flag on the side. Before we start any of the painting, I do apply a cast texture using Mr. Surface 1000 and an old brush just to give it that realistic look in the scale. Just in light passes, it takes me about two coats to get it completely opaque. Just doing this, just in case there's any oil or dirt on the model surface, just so it's not going to make any issues for us later on when we apply our base layer. So same thing on the turret. This is after a second coat, continuing to the hull. Same idea, moving in an up and downwards motion, just base coating the tank. The main thing, especially whenever using an airbrush, is making sure not to pull the paint onto the parts that you're priming or painting or whatever. Uh, especially in this scale, it's very easy to lose detail if you apply too heavy of a layer. And here go the parts after being primed. After this, I mix my base tone from five different Tamiya paints, getting a sandy base color. And once again, just very lightly, with light layers going over the parts, the main thing is, once again, not wanting to pool or have too much paint on the model and lose detail. Whenever I airbrush, I use nicely thin down um, paints. Uh, with Tamiya, I generally thin with lacquer thinner. Um, and depending on other brands, I'm using AK Real Colors as well, lacquer thinner. Um, I don't airbrush uh, water-based paints onto my models. Generally, I find they chip off pretty easily and they're not particularly resistant. So I find for base coating, Tamiya's a good one to go with. As you can see here, the same thing, just making sure I get into all the details, I'm going with an up and downwards motion, and here's the finished hull. You can see the opacity is nice and strong and there's no grey showing through. Now moving on to hand painting the uh, camouflage scheme, I decided to do it with a paintbrush and not with the airbrush. It seemed in the reference photos that it may have been um, airbrushed onto the tank, but I just couldn't be bothered to mask it out and I'm not good enough with the airbrush to do it in 172nd scale with a tank this small. So just very lightly with watered down water-based paint, I just sort of etch out and sketch out what I want um, the camouflage pattern to be. Um, it takes me about three to four passes on each piece of the pattern to reach full opacity, so it does take some time. Uh, there is no rush, obviously, when you're doing this, the best uh, result is going to come out of how much time you're willing to put into the project. And just remember, there's no rush. Just take your time and try to envision, envision where you want to be at the end of your build. Same thing here. You can see I'm applying the second um, coat, keeping it a bit more opaque. And now you can see the part we were working on earlier is uh, completely opaque, and I'm now applying a second coat to another piece of the camouflage. Just moving slowly, if you do go over your outline, you can always just come back with a damp piece of paper or a damp um, brush and water, uh, rub that away. So that's handy about water-based paints. Unlike Tamiya, that's why I ne never use Tamiya for brush painting. And there you can see the finished turret. Looking okay at this point, obviously not uh, perfect, but the weathering and chipping later is going to help bring it all together. The next step, just continuing with the hull, same thing as earlier, I just outline my camouflage scheme, and then after I've outlined it, I fill in the other parts, just moving slowly. Like I said, at this point, you sort of have to envision what the scheme will look like later on in the build, and you have to be patient with yourself. So there we go here, applying a second coat, and just building up the opacity. 
moving on to the running gear, once again I use the same method, just building up layers nice and slowly with thin down paint. And then here we can see the parts that I've uh, painted green um, and now getting ready to paint it brown. So it took me some time, uh, about three and a half, four hours to get all of these parts painted with the brush. Um, some pieces that I buggered up and then have to redo. It wasn't too bad in the end. It's also a good experience for me because usually I try to stay away from brush painting camouflage. So it's good practice. And that's it, very always important whenever you do any model, not to be scared to try new things. And now continuing with the brown uh, pieces of the camouflage, it's following the exact same method uh, as earlier, just making an outline and then filling it in. And there you can see the finished running gear. After this, we move on to um, brush painting the uh, small details on the tank, like tools and other bits and bobs. As you can see there, I go a little bit over, but that's okay, because we just clean it up later with the base color. And as you can see, I, after finishing the tools, just painting the um, metal with a dark gray color and the handles with wood. Pretty simple. I also uh, paint the leather straps on the storage bins a dark brown, just to give that leather uh, look to it. And after this, I base coat the tracks uh, with NATO Black from Tamiya, which is quite a good base color for any track, especially even if you're going to weather into rust. It's recommended by a lot of people. And the parts that I couldn't reach with the airbrush, I paint by hand with my brush. <laughs> after this, I mask out the areas where I'm going to put the French flags. I use my airbrush for this task. Applying light. Uh, base coat is going to be a light layer of white so just careful not to flood that in and to go under the mask and same on the other side after this I'm going to apply the blue and then the red same thing just trying not to flood it and ruin the detail and there's the finished result there was a small amount of cleanup needed in the white but overall, uh, I didn't have to do very much. Uh, whenever you mask things like this, it's handy to sort of measure things out using a ruler. Or you can just go by eye. In this case, I just went by eye and then sort of widened the white in the middle at the end. After this, I have to cut out a mask for the star on the commander's cupola. So that's what I do using an X-Acto knife and my ruler. I then just place it on the cupola using double-sided tape and masking the rest of the turret. As you can see here, it comes out a bit wonky, so I have to fix it using my paintbrush, and it's more presentable at the very least after that fix up. Now I apply a satin varnish um, top coat, just preparing for the next weathering phase and for applying decals. As you can see here, I'm applying the um, roundel for recognition on the back of the turret. I apply Mr. Mark setter to the uh, model beforehand and then place the decal and then use a cotton swab to wick away and push it into position. You can also use a toothpick just to sort of get that exact positioning uh, where you want on the model and then you press it into where you want it to be. Be careful when you press it in and make sure it's exactly where you want it otherwise you may end up in a situation uh, where you have to rip off the decal and either replace it with a new one or mask off the area. And here you can see the model with all the decals applied and details painted at this point it looks a bit like a toy and the next few steps are going to help us um, lessen this overall look. I'm now going to mix my base chipping color out of Vallejo white and um, Splinter Master base from AK Figure Paints. I dab uh, a sponge into the paint that I've mixed and then dab most of the paint out of the sponge onto a piece of paper and lightly press the sponge onto the model. What you want to make sure is when you press, not to press too hard, otherwise you'll end up with a big globule and it'll look quite bad. After applying this, we have to paint in uh, steel colored chips into the lighter colored chips that we've applied using the sponge. This takes a bit of time, uh, especially to be neat and detailed, so 
just take your time here and use a nice fine tips brush. And here you can see on the running gear a piece that I've finished and already how that sort of helped to make it look less toy-like. And then here you can see two pieces compared. On the top we have one that has all the steel chips painted in and on the bottom just sponge chipping. Same thing with the turret as you can see here. This is with the steel chips and the base chips that I've applied. And there's the tank fully chipped. At the moment it's helped it out a little bit. We've lost some of that glossy tone and it's looking slightly better but we still have a few steps to go to integrate the chips into the tank and to apply a pin wash and some other streaking um, dirt details just to help it out. Chipping can sometimes be a bit of a contentious topic in modeling. Um, personally I like my tanks chipped but if it comes to you and you don't that's also completely okay. The next thing we're going to do is um, out of some cheap artist oil paints mix our pin wash. This set cost me about 10 Aussie dollars with about 30 oil paints included. I use enamel thinner to thin it down more than what you see here so it flows nicely onto details. Using a brush I just dab it onto raised details and some recessed details on the tank especially aiming for bolt heads and uh, just anything that you want to outline sort of with a fake shadow that's the main idea. And as you can see here, continuing with other bolt heads. I also place it once again on bolts, but also um, recessed lines where you can see near my thumb where the tank sort of plates are meeting together. Apply it there later. Just to sort of outline everything. And here you can see a finished piece of the track that has had all the pin wash applied. Now what I'm going to do is rub out some of that excess by dipping my uh, brush into some enamel thinner, wiping most of that away, and then lightly wiping at the excess around the details that I don't want to be there. While you do this, you're also going to feather the oil paint into the rest of the model, applying a light filter, which is going to give you a nice sort of dirty, grimy look. At least for me, I quite like that um, look on the models. And just continuing the same thing here, just picking out areas where you think it's a little bit too much or you'd like to feather it into the rest. And now what we're going to do to integrate those rust chips, we use AK Rust Streaks, so an enamel product, and I apply that right on top of the grey um, chips that I used earlier, that I made earlier, sorry. I just continue applying that. After apply, I let that dry. So you apply it to the grey chips and then you let it dry. Same thing here, just once again, dabbing it onto grey chips, let it dry for 5 to 10 minutes also on the turret. And once it's dry, I do the same thing again using a brush dipped in enamel thinner and then sort of want to just integrate that and soften the edges of that rust um, enamel wash. That's the most important thing. And it just allows those dark grey chips to take on a bit more of a rusty colour and to integrate it with the rest of your scheme on the tank. Same thing here, just moving in an up and downwards motion or dabbing and just to get what you want. The next thing I decide to add some engine grime to the running gear, uh, as you can see here, which is just basically a dark black grey uh, AK enamel product, just to replicate where I thought dust and dirt or grease might accumulate. Same thing here, I don't show it, but later on I take the same method using a brush dipped in a, uh, enamel thinner and just in an up and downwards motion making streaks just as if there's been oil dripping down on that armoured for the running gear. And here you can see the tank after getting that pin wash, getting some of the um, rust, uh, I'm not sure how you would call it, but those that rust sort of light dot wash and then some streaking grime from that enamel oil or grease product. I think in the end that sort of enhances the overall look. After this we move on to painting the exhaust in uh, JN Grey from Tamiya. I also make some colour modulation using um, a bit of a lighter blue colour. A lighter grey blue colour. After that I use shadow shade and we're going to do the chipping method again with the sponge. But this time we're trying to recreate the look of rust. 
So same thing, you dip the sponge into there, unload most of the paint, and then lightly dab it onto your exhaust. In this scale, you've got to be careful, otherwise it's very easy to overdo it. And here you can see, after spending about five minutes with it, lightly going over. And then with some pieces, uh, I had to paint by hand with a paintbrush. Just what the look is, and in my opinion, in the scale, it looks quite good. And then after that, I apply some um, more paints, just water-based paints, and apply some detail. You can see where the um, head of the exhaust is with some of the rubber. After that, I apply these two wash products from AK, just thin down with a nabble thinner, and just light coats over the entirety of the exhaust. It takes me about eight coats in total using the lighter, uh, more yellowy rust tone and a darker brown rust tone. And now what I do, I just apply both of these enamel products over this exhaust in a few different layers, just getting some different tones. And in the end, we get a uh, result that looks like this. And in my opinion, in the scale, in it looks quite convincing, at least to me. Uh, it might be a little bit too light in certain spots, but I think overall it looks pretty okay, especially when we're finished with the overall tank. It will fit in quite And this is where we're up to so far. As you can see, it's looking much better than earlier. Um, at this point, I do decide it looks still not weathered enough and not dirty enough. So I end up applying a um, pin dot uh, filter to the tank, which is basically just different colors of oil paints applied in dots along um, flat edge surfaces of the vehicle just to mimic rain streaks and dust buildup. Um, I end up using white, um, yellow ochre, and I think two other colors, which I can't remember. And as you can see here, it just gives you that nice dusty effect. It's quite obvious on the flag, um, and it gives you a good idea of where we're up to. After this, I decide to add some streaking grime, or some, some uh, dirt streaks on the turret. Um, at this point, I take a bit of artistic liberty. I'd assume there would not be enough rain in Tunisia to cause this um, kind of effect, but I sort of just wanted to have some a little bit dirtier vehicle in overall tone, so I decided to add some. After this, I uh, use a uh, normal pencil to apply some sheen on the wall, on the tracks, just so appear as they're worn. This ended up being a bit pointless as after I applied some um, dust pigment and it sort of took that effect mostly away. So as you can see here, I just slightly applied the dust pigment to the tracks and to other parts of the tank. And after that, I pretty much call the build done. Um, it was actually my first 172nd scale model, so it was a good experience overall. Uh, some things aren't perfect about it, some of the chips are a bit oversized, but overall I'm happy with the model and it only took me about two and a half days to complete. So that's always a bonus and it takes up a little space. So here you can see a video of the finished thing. Uh, I don't have a great camera set, uh, video camera setup, so what I'm going to do is show you some photos at the end. If you did end up liking the video, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll be releasing more content in the near future, and we'll be happy to have you around. Um, so once again, guys, thanks for watching through to this point in the video. Remember to stick around for the photos at the end, and have a good one. Bye.